The Make Noise Woggle Bug contains three sections, the audio section, the control voltage section, and the clock section. In the previous video, we talked about everything regarding the clock. Now it's time to move up the module to the control voltage section in the middle. The CV portion of the module features three outputs, two knobs, and two inputs. We'll start by describing the outputs with nothing patched into the module, and then work our way to the left through the controls and then to the inputs. The topped output is the stepped output. This is a signal you would expect from a sample and hold, a series of voltages that jump instantly from one value to the next. With nothing patched into the external input, the input for the sample and hold circuit is the Wogglebug's internal noise source. As I mentioned in the last video, the sample and hold, which you're currently seeing on channel one on the scope in yellow and is providing the volt per octave signal to an oscillator, the sample and hold defaults to being clocked by the master clock. So if I turn that up, the rate of the sample and hold increases, lower the master clock, and the rate decreases. One note to add here is I decrease the sample and hold clock. The Wogglebug is affected by an unavoidable analog sample and hold droop or sag. That is, at very low clock speeds, the voltages will noticeably drop as the capacitor naturally bleeds off some of its charge back into the circuit. This is especially evident if you're using sample and hold for pitch and have very long periods between transitions. If this is a showstopper, you could consider a digital sample and hold module, which will maintain its output indefinitely. So far, so good. We have an internally clocked sample and hold signal being fed by an internal noise source. The next output is the smooth output. This passes the stepped output through a slew limiter. A slew limiter will limit the rate of change on a voltage, so rather than having discrete steps, the voltage will gradually make its way from one point to another. The speed at which the slew limiter reacts is determined by the master clock signal. Here's the smooth signal by itself. Here's the smooth signal overlaid with the stepped output. You can see that it follows the stepped output pretty closely. If we turn up the master clock, the slew rate for the smooth signal also gets faster. This means that the smooth signal almost always catches up to the step signal unless there are some very large jumps. If you turn down the master clock, the smooth signal slows down quite a bit, but still follows the step voltage pretty well. But you might say, what if you want to control the rate of change on the smooth output independently of the step rate? You can see that they are joined together with a fixed behavior, and the woggle bug ain't about fixed behavior. That's where we go back to the clock section. Remember from the previous video that the external clock signal affects the sample and hold and is independent of the master clock. For example, I will patch in a square wave LFO to clock the sample and hold. Now the step signal follows the speed of the external LFO and I'm free to adjust the rate of the slew limiter using the master clock output. With a low clock speed and a high slew rate, you can get a version of the stepped output with slewed transition points. So the smooth output is simply stepped output run through a slew limiter. Pretty straightforward stuff. But next up is where things start to get interesting, the woggle output. At first glance, this appears to be another easily understood output consisting of the slewed output run through yet another slew limiter. This is far from the case, however, and this is where we get some of that patented woggle bug chaos. I will put a link into the description that might prove useful. It describes some of the earlier woggle bug circuits and how they work. The gist is that the woggle circuit is partially steered by a phase locked loop or PLL circuit. If the PLL is heavily damped, it will track slowly. If it is not heavily damped, changes in the voltage will overshoot, try to correct, overshoot again, and then eventually settle in. This is the woggle that you will hear about in a moment. Let's look at an example. So I have the smooth signal channel one, uh, is yellow, and the woggle in channel 2, blue. The woggle signal is controlling the pitch of the oscillator. We'll start with the woggle control, which is the second control, in the middle. Note that in general it follows the smooth output just slightly drunkenly. If we increase the control, which effectively slows down the response of the woggle circuit, or damps it, you can see the signal flattens out. Remember, in electronics we don't dampen anything, you dampen a sponge. What we're doing is damping the response of the PLL circuit. So let's go back to the middle, and now here comes the fun part. If we start decreasing the control, we increase the tracking speed of the PLL. To me, the interesting stuff happens in the first 5 to 10% of this knob, so we're going to use a light touch to get down there.
As we approach the bottom end of the knob's control, you can hear small vibrato-like fluctuations in the pitch. At this point, I'm just barely off of fully counterclockwise. If I turn the knob fully counterclockwise, you can hear the chirping noise that gets introduced, and what I would consider to be a signature feature of the Wogglebug. Basically, you get small bursts of FM when controlling pitch. You get these little oscillations that occur uh, after the transition points. We'll come back to the Wogglebug output in a minute because that has a few more tricks up its sleeve. Let's go back to the top of the module, specifically the Ego id control. This particular control will affect all of the outputs. This is also effectively where you impart your will on the Wogglebug. The Wogglebug is kind of like a partner. It's doing something and you do something. If you want to completely crush its spirit, you turn this knob all the way to the left. The Wogglebug gets sad and effectively drops down to no output whatsoever. Turn the knob up. You're listening to what the Wogglebug has to say. This particular behavior is pretty important for a number of reasons that we'll get into uh, both here and in the audio section. But for now, let's just look at what this control does with nothing passed into the external input. Once again, we're listening to the stepped output that is feeding the volt proactive input on an oscillator. If we turn the ego id knob to the right and allow the woggle bug to go unchecked, we start to see larger jumps between the, the voltages. So it's effectively a range control or the unattenuated output of the sample and hold circuit. Go back to the middle. We have a fairly even spread with some more gradual transitions, but as we start to decrease this, we'll decrease the range that the values will jump to. This can further be offset with an external offset control and that can really help steer your patches. And then as I illustrated before, if we completely crush the Wogglebug spirit, it gets sad and drops down to nothing. So that matters because now we're gonna look at what happens when we use the external input. With nothing patched into the external input, this is a range control. Lots of range, very little range. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cycling envelope from Maths and I'm gonna put that into the external input. I'm also gonna turn ego id all the way down. So in this example, I have the looping envelope going into the external input. Ego id is all the way down. Clock speed is all the way up. This means that the sample and hold circuit is operating as fast as it possibly can. Well, more if I added this. But the point is it's reproducing this wave pretty accurately. When we have an external signal put into the external input, the ego id now controls uh, as a crossfader between the internal noise source and the signal that you want to uh, be sampling and holding. So now listen what happens when I turn down the master clock. Okay, this is a very traditional sample and hold stepped output going to the VCO uh, pitch input. Uh, this makes me sad. This makes the woggle bug sad. This is not what the woggle bug wants to do. So what we're going to do is start increasing the ego id control to crossfade between the external input and the internal noise source. So here you can see some randomness overlaid with the envelope that we've patched in. Um, the woggle bug is a backseat driver but not really in control. Here in the middle, we start to actually lose our way, but it is there if you look and listen closely. Uh, here the Wogglebug is kind of trying to grab a hold of the wheel, but we're still doing stuff. We turn this all the way up. The external signal is completely faded out. Wogglebug is in our lap. It's steering. We're just working the pedals and hoping everything turns out okay. Finally, we get to the enigmatic influence input. This little guy is a little hard to understand, but it's very important for some of the more advanced features. Uh, I'll read verbatim what the manual says, but even that doesn't tell us the full story. Influence input. CV and or audio signal input that performs the following duties. Modulates frequency of the smooth and woggle VCOs. Inputs to the ring mod circuit. And level shifts the woggle CV control. Responds 0 volts to 10 volts. So for this example, I will go back to the previous setup where the woggle bug is on channel two of the scope and in blue, the smooth signal is in yellow. Uh, what we're hearing is the pitch being modulated by the woggle control. So the influence input, uh, we're going to add an offset from the maths next door. Uh, only positive voltage will have an impact. There we go. 
Uh, if I add a negative voltage in, it effectively kills the signal. If I add positive voltage in, it doesn't offset the signal as if we were processing it directly with maths, but rather it causes it to kind of skip more along the top. So the further I increase it, kind of the bigger those jumps are as it sort of maxes out the offset and uh, only really responds to some of the bigger dips. So that can be useful, but that's not really what we're here for for the influence circuit. Next, we're going to continue to monitor the Woggle circuit output, but I'm going to plug a different signal into the input. Now recall from the manual that it says it responds to CV or audio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the LFO that I had patched in before, and I'm gonna increase that to an audio rate. So it certainly had an impact on the Woggle output, uh, but it's not quite doing what we wanted it to do yet. And that is a special function of this where the Woggle bug effectively becomes a PLL pitch to voltage tracker. Now, in order for this to work, what we have to do is completely subjugate the Woggle bug as I described before. And this is the key to the influence input for both this function as well as controlling the VCL. We're going to take the ego id knob, just really crush the Woggle bug, and it's going to go down to sit there in the middle. Now, what I'm going to do, and you can't really see below, is change the pitch of the oscillator that's going to the influence input. I raise the frequency of the oscillator, and that raises the voltage out. I lower the oscillator speed, it lowers the voltage out. So what we have is pitch to CV, a feature that the PLL circuits are used for. Now, this doesn't track uh, one volt per octave because woggle bug, uh, but it can be used to have an audio source create a control voltage for something else. Now the woggle control still has an impact here. If I turn this all the way up to slow down the speed, it effectively slews it. So right now I'm doing fairly fast changes, but you can see that the jumps are heavily slewed. Further, if I drop this all the way down, the circuit becomes unstable, starts to begin to track faster, and the areas of transition and some voltage will cause those chirps to happen. As I mentioned, we'll use this influence again later uh, in order to steer the uh, pitch of the audio outputs, but that'll be in the next video. So that is the Wogglebug CV section. Remember, this ego id control all the way to the left is your input or external, all the way to the right is id or internal. I don't know if that really maps to the actual psychology uh, jargon because I never took psych, uh, but I'll just take make noises word for it. So that's the CV section. Hope this was useful. In the next one, we'll talk both about the audio outputs as well as some self-patching ideas.